And every week we come here on Monday, we talk about a historical performance from Jalen Hurts. Doing things that have rarely been done or if ever done in the National Football League. Buckle up. It's the Football Playbook with your boy RIC and the place to be Rick Saratella. Checking in from the Jersey Shore here on this uh, Monday, September 26, 2022. It's our 20th episode, oh, by the way. And uh, it is a championship football Monday. That's how the Philadelphia Eagles are playing, like a championship caliber football team. And you want to give me the criticism? Hey, they really haven't faced a contender. Hey, uh you know, Jalen Hurts is beating up on makeshift defenses. Hey, you can only play who's in front of you. The Eagles are taking care of business and doing it in a big, big way. That's right. Paul Kane in the chat room. 3-0. and We're flying high over here on the football playbook. Got a great show lined up for you today. Uh, Martin Frank from the Delaware News Journal will be making his football playbook debut uh, at 11 a.m. We'll also have Howard Balzer, longtime NFL insider, of course, uh, every Monday at 1130, uh, Philadelphia's finest. He'll he'll uh, break down some Eagles. We'll go around the league with him in hour two. Uh, but I want to get into the Giants or the Giants. I got my notes. The Giants and the Dolphins are your only other undefeated teams here after three weeks pending the Giants Monday night football game tonight against your Dallas Cowgirls. We'll get into that later on in the show. Oh, by the way, but that's that's the league we live in. In 2022, you got three weeks in the books and only three teams undefeated with your Miami Dolphins in the AFC, who would have thunk, and your Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC. We'll see if the Giants uh, can keep the big day balls going tonight against the Cooper Rush-led Dallas Cowboys, but it's all about Jalen Hurts today, if you ask me. Stephen Michael in the chat room, it's like, it's like great minds think alike. It's almost like... You're streamed into the Jacob Sports YouTube channel so much that you already know what I'm thinking. I'm only 20 episodes in. Yes, 900 plus yards passing, 150 plus yards rushing. I have it right here in my notes. Not the first quarterback in history. Maybe it is the first quarterback in history. I know a player hasn't done that since at least 1950. And every week we come here on Monday, we talk about a historical performance from Jalen Hurts. Doing things that have rarely been done or if ever done in the National Football League. Are there still haters out there on the Jalen Hurts situation? Because why in the world, why in the world would you give up on a guy that's 24 years old and playing at an elite level? Jalen Hurts is playing at an elite level. There's five words in Hurts. There's five words in elite. Dare I say it? There might not be five quarterbacks in the National Football League better than Jalen Hurts right now. Whether you want to believe that or not, that's on you. All I can say for my 21st year of covering the National Football League, guy looks pretty good to me. Guy looks outstanding to me. Guy looks like an MVP candidate, quite frankly. Jalen Hurts, that's who I'm talking about. Not Carson Wentz. Jalen Hurts, who, oh, by the way, Brian Baldinger, our good friend Baldy, you don't want to take my word for it? Called him the best deep ball passer in the National Football League through the first three weeks of the season. So if you don't want to take my word for it, nobody spends more time in the film room than Brian Baldinger. Go take his word for it. And I'll get into some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the deep ball passes that Hurts had, I thought, were on the money, on the mark, dropping dimes in the bucket. Woo! It's like Picasso out here, man. I need to get over to Italy and see me some Picasso. And if I don't, I'm going to go down to Philly because that's the next best thing I can, the closest thing I can find to it. Shout out to all the chat room people waking up with us here on the Jacob Sports YouTube channel. Of course, your home for the Eagles pre and post game. 
over at Ocean Casino Resorts. Again, it was lit. It was popping. And the Eagles were popping off early and often in this game here against good old friend Carson Wentz. And this was, you know, we, we, we've been keeping tabs on each week. The theme this week, which I loved at the top of the show, by the way, great, great job by Fox. I think it was on Jalen Hurts did a pregame interview. I love the quote. He said, and, and they were talking about AJ Brown coming over and his message to AJ Brown and what they spoke about. And in terms of the leadership that Hurts and Brown are going to provide, but the conversation went a little like this. Be a thermostat, not a thermometer. And when I go and write my um, Super Bowl book at the end of the year for this mystical, magical Philadelphia Eagles carpet ride, chapter three is going to be titled, Be a, Thur be a Thermostat, Not a Thermometer. That's going to be the title of chapter three. In other words, dictate the tone. Dictate the temperature. Don't adjust to how hot or how cold it could be in the Philadelphia media market, in between the white stripes. You dictate the temperature. Don't let somebody else dial it up or dial it down. You be the thermostat. Don't be a thermometer. Paul Keen in the chat room says, what do you think is causing the second half performance by the offense? Yeah. That's one of my points of conversation today. You want to be critical on something? One of the things we can be critical about? 65 of your 84 points this year have come in the second quarter. All 24 points yesterday came in the second quarter. And out of those 84 points this year, only 14 points have come in the second half. And it's a good question. Is it play calling? Is it a mindset? Is it... You know, let's be honest, I'm going to get into some of my reaction throughout the game, but I remember here writing in my notes at halftime, this game was mentally and physically over by halftime. It was over. 24 nothing. The Eagles went for it on fourth and goal right there before the half. Another Devonta Smith spectacular play touchdown and i'm trying to get our good friend gail saunders who was down at the game on because the boo birds were out the boo birds were out at 9 16 in the first quarter when washington was punting on their own nine yard line the philly crowd was louder than any washington commanders crowd put together that was in the first quarter at halftime the commanders got booed off the field booed off the field at their home stadium and you saw Jalen Hurts post game press conference he said it felt like a home game it felt like a home game now live with Coos in the chat room says the conservative play calling in the second half you know it's a mentality that they need to get away from i don't know if it's the play calling i got to go back and look at it it might be a coincidence hey the points are coming in bunches however you get them it's dominant football and the second quarter is it seems to be where they turn it on yeah they got to play four quarters of better football but that's a well-rounded game oh by the way nine sacks nine sacks Really, with a four-man rush, four-man rush, uh, the blitz percentage or the pressure percentage was thirty-six point five percent. So they went from sixteen uh, percent in week one. I think it was like thirty-three percent in week two, thirty-six and a half percent this past week. Seven players on the defensive line had three plus three or more pressures, a seventeen point three percent sack rate. I mean, give credit to the secondary, too, because Bradbury's been lights out. Darius Slay, big game Slay, came to play once again. 
Epps played 100% of the snaps. I think Chauncey Gardner played 100% of the snaps. Because the coverage is so good in the secondary, it allows these guys to get to the quarterback really necessarily without blitzing, but they're getting pressure to the quarterback with this four-man rush on a third of the plays, which is outstanding. It's complimentary football. It's what we call championship football. Now, hey, we're going to nitpick. How do we get better? Hey, we want to play four quarters of better football. That's something to work on in the next three games because don't look now. I don't like the early week by the week seven by, but don't look now. The Philadelphia Eagles should be and are expected to be undefeated going into the bye week. Good old friend Doug Peterson's dialing it up down there in Jacksonville, and it'll be Jaguars week. We got Austin Lane checking in tomorrow. We got Tony Baselli later on in the week. We'll get into the Jaguars with our good friend, Coach John D. Filippo, because it's Doug Peterson week right after Carson Wentz week. But they should take care of business against the Jaguars. Then I think they got the Arizona Cardinals, who is going to be a tough game on the road. It's a game they should win. And then week six, I don't care if Dak is back or not. With or without Dak Prescott, the Philadelphia Eagles should beat your Dallas Cowboys. So they should be 6-0 and going into the bye week. 5-1, and one, sign me up right now. 5-1, and one, sign me up right now because that means a third of the way through, the Eagles will be on pace to be a 14-3 and three ball club. <laughs> That's the kind of football that they're playing right now. Only the Giants and Dolphins are undefeated. We'll see if the Giants get through the Cooper Rush-led Cowboys tonight. We'll get more on that tonight or later on in the show with Howard Balzer when he when he jumps on. Jalen Hurts, first player since 1950. Over 900 yards passing. Over 100 yards rushing. And I love the quote. I love the quote by Mark Screlith, Screlith, who's been doing a lot of these Eagles games. At the end of the game, he was talking about Jalen Hurts and Carson Wentz, the compare and contrast, and he, he said something that really stood out to me that I agree with. He said there's two types of athletes in the National Football League. Those who are humble and those who are about to be humbled. Think about that. Jalen Hurts is as humble as they come. Doesn't get too high. Doesn't get too low. Carson Wentz basically admitted earlier in the week, said I could have been a better teammate, could have been a better person, acknowledging that he was immature. Those who are humble and those who are about to be humbled, a.k.a. the difference between being a starter in the National Football League and being a backup, because Carson Wentz, third team in three years, holds on to the football too long, makes a lot of bad plays, takes a lot of poor sacks. This is his last year as a starter in the NFL. In fact, I said it last week, when Carson Wentz comes back to the link in week 10, it'll probably be Sam Howell time. Because Washington will realize what a mistake they made. Just like the Indianapolis Colts realized a year ago, the Washington Commanders will be moving on from Carson Wentz. I guarantee that! Take that to the books. Carson Wentz, will not be your Washington starter next year. And I don't think he'll be the starter by week 10. I think Sam Howell will be in there because they're going to find out what Sam Howell's about. And I said it before the season. I'd rather go to war with Taylor Haneke. Pop a cold one open for me, Taylor. Keep it cracking, baby. So say what you want about the second half. Yeah, they took their foot off the gas once again. 
for the third straight week. But when you play like this, that's called nitpicking. It's called nitpicking. And, you know, you saw, again, those who are humbled and those who are about to be. Look at the body language. Did you see the body language of Carson Wentz early on, all game long, first half, second half? This guy was so frustrated. What did they have, six sacks by halftime? Philadelphia outscored Washington 300 or yard. They outscored him 24 nothing on on the yardage 322 yards to 50 at halftime. Physically and mentally beat down by halftime. And you started to see the the mental clock speed up in Carson Wentz's head especially in the second half. I think it was the first time in like 60 years that they had nine sacks. And everybody got in on the action. I mean, Fletcher Cox, he was hugging Carson in the pregame. He was hugging them all game on the sack attack. Javon Hargrove, he was in on the mix. Josh Sweat, big time week. Hassan Reddick was in there too. Oh, by the way, Jordan Davis got in on the fun on the last sack. I mean, you could not expect or ask for a more impressive defensive performance than what your Philadelphia Eagles turned into uh, yesterday. Outstanding. Both sides of the ball. Outstanding. I'm going to get more into my uh, in-game takeaways, but just a quick look at the uh, snap counts because we've been keeping tabs on that defensive line. I love what they're doing with the defensive line rotation. I think it's smart to have Fletcher Cox play 47% of the snaps yesterday. Almost a throwback to his rookie season when he was first coming into the league. Now, instead of bringing him up to speed, they're preserving that energy. And I like it. I like it a lot. In fact, the whole defensive line rotation, nobody played more than 60% of the snaps. Josh Sweat played 61%. Hassan Reddick, 56%. Hassan Reddick, what are they paying this guy? $14 million this year? $10 million, $11 million? This guy's making a lot of money. He's only playing 56% of the snaps. And that's okay. It's okay. Javon Hargrave. 53% of the snaps. And I like I like the interior, what they've done here. How many times, you know, this ain't Texas A&M, this ain't Alabama, this ain't Georgia, this is a National Football League. How many times can you have a seven or eight man rotation and feel good about it? Because you had Sweat at 61%, Reddick at 56%, Hargrave at 53% on the interior uh, Milton Williams, 49%. Cox, 47%. Marlon T, 44%. You want to talk about the uh, Jordan Davis, 31%. He played, I think, 24 snaps. So he's averaging about 23 snaps per game. But we talked about Derek Barnett. How would they fill that void? Well, hey. Patrick Johnson played 36%. Brandon Graham, 35%. Teron Jackson was in the mix too. So maybe they don't need JPP. Maybe they don't need reinforcements because they kept it in-house. Everybody stepped their game up and it resulted in nine sacks. When's the last time the Eagles had nine sacks? Was it 60 years ago? Unbelievable. Every time I come on the show, we're talking about historical records. That's the level of play the Philadelphia Eagles are playing with. And outside of the Miami Dolphins, there's nobody in the NFL hotter. Go look at the Super Bowl odds. What are, what are they down, a 9-1, to 12-1? to one? I saw the Tampa Bay and Green Bay game yesterday. Did you, did you look like those were the top NFC teams? I saw the 49ers last night. I'll get into that debacle. 
Does did the 49ers look like the team to beat in the NFC? The Packers, the Bucks? Who's that team standing in the way of Philadelphia? We're going to find out Thanksgiving week. Because until we face Green Bay Thanksgiving week on November 27th, I'm going to have all the naysayers, the doubters, and the haters telling me that Philadelphia hasn't played anybody of relevance. Well, all you can do is beat the people they put in front of you. Timothy Walker in the chat room. Daniel, good to see you. He's a newbie. Dominic Dabby. Shout out to all the chat rooms. It's all about the coaching. You're right. Jonathan Gannon. Stand up. Shane Steichen, who I think Johnny Mack on the Birds 365 show said, hey, enjoy him now while you can because he might not be on the team next year. Shane Steichen is calling plays in a way where he's going to get head coaching consideration. That's what I think. Oh, Rick, it's only three weeks. I, I can't give Jalen Hurts $40 million now just on three games. Come see me week 17, week 18. Come see me January. Come see me February. The football playbook, we call it like we see it. Did you see the first three weeks? Because if you watched football for as long as I have, and came away saying that Jalen Hurts isn't a franchise quarterback, then you just don't know football. You want to give up on this guy? You want to give up on Jalen Hurts? Three years into the system, 24 years old, and you want to go draft a new quarterback instead of paying this guy? Give me a break. That's bad business. My good friend, Craig T. Smith, longtime scout, who's been scouting football for even longer than I have, says Hurts is a fun watch. Holy cow, the Eagles are scary. Yeah, because they can beat you in the pass. They can beat you on the ground. Now, the ground game wasn't stellar yesterday. They only averaged 2.4 yards per carry on the ground. You know, 21 first downs. They won the first down game. 21 first downs. 16 came through passing. Another three came on the ground. I think two of them came through penalty. Oh, by the way, they lost the time of possession game. They only had the ball 27 minutes. But when you dominate 400 yards to 240, with most of that coming in the first half, you can get by the Washington Commanders. Devonta Smith, by the way, early and often, career high, 169 receiving yards. We'll get more into that. Uh, you know, Eagles social media. I love the social media team with the Eagles changing the W to the L at the midfield. But um, a lot of game balls to give away here. A lot of game balls to give away. Um, the defense, nine sacks, 17 hits on Carson Wentz. Again, 36.5% pressure, seven players with more than three pressures and a 17.3% sack rate. Okay. Um, I'm going to get into more of my in-game reactions. Before we do, I know we got a star-studded show. Martin Frank from Delaware News Journal is going to join us at 11. We got Howard Balzer, longtime NFL insider, at 11.30. We'll talk more Eagles on the other side. Real quickly, I want to bring you up to speed around the league in, in terms of other things that I saw. How about those Dolphins taking care of business? 21-19 to 19 over the Bills. I think the Bills' defensive uh, secondary has been exposed. And they didn't even get Tyreek Hill involved in this game, quite frankly. They still win uh, the Tua concussion protocol. I think the NFLPA will be looking into that whole situation. But the Dolphins 3-0, they were, they're were they the talk of the town in the AFC. The Colts, they get on the grid. Our good friend Frank Wright gets off the snide 
a lot of heat on his seat. They beat the Chiefs 20 to 17. Um, special teams, I think, cost Kansas City in this ballgame. Interestingly enough, Patrick Mahomes was blitzed on 45% of his snaps during the first two games. Frank Wright and company only blitzed him twice that entire game. So maybe that's the recipe to beat Patrick Mahomes. Sit back, try to let these Chiefs receivers beat you. But the, the Colts take care of business 20 to 17. Another guy playing for a big money contract. We talk about Jalen Hurts being a $40 million quarterback. To me, there's no doubt in my mind, Lamar Jackson's going to be a $50 million quarterback. Whether that's on Baltimore or somebody else, somebody's going to pay this man the money he deserves. 18 to 29, 218 yards, four touchdowns passing, another one rush, five touchdowns for Lamar Jackson. Oh, by the way, Mac Jones, high ankle sprain. New England Patriots, their season looks like doom and gloom. Staying in the AFC, Titans beat the Raiders 24-22. Josh McDaniels 0-3. Uh, if you want a side story in this one, our good old friend Mac Collins has emerged as a somewhat playmaker. He had a big week. Um, Bengals come back, the bounce back week for Joe Burrow. Take care of business there, 27 to 12. One thing I do want to highlight, Sauce Gardner, who was a uh, first round pick for the Jets, played extremely well on Jamar Chase. So if you want to take a positive takeaway on the Jets yesterday, Sauce Gardner looks like the real deal. Uh, and then our Jaguars, not they didn't just beat the Chargers. They whooped them. They whooped the Chargers, 38-10. This was another game over by halftime. Brandon Staley has to be better. You know, uh, Justin Herbert's in the end of the game. They're down by 28 points. Justin Herbert's still taking snaps. He's injured. You got to preserve this guy long term. I thought that was a bad decision by Brandon Staley. We talk about N'Kobe Dean not playing for the Eagles coming out of the draft. Him and Devin Lloyd were considered inside linebacker one and two. Devin Lloyd had a big, big day for those Jacksonville Jaguars yesterday. Okay. So that's your AFC report. And then you got the NFC again, Howard balls will be on at the end of the show who covers the Cardinals. They could not defeat the world champion LA Rams, the Rams whose run game is atrocious. They found a way to win this one, 20 to 12. Uh, Aaron Donald, 100 sacks. Only the second true defensive tackle in NFL history to have that 100 sack. Uh, John Randall, an undrafted free agent who's in the Hall of Fame, by the way, good friend of the show, being the only other one. Remember, sacks were really not an, uh, an official stat. I think 1982 is when they start keeping tracks of that. It's still impressive for Aaron Donald. Uh, you know, Green Bay, 14, Tampa Bay, 12. Bucks make a late game charge. But, you know, this one was Aaron Rodgers, you know, fast start. He completed 12 of his first, uh, first 13 passes. Tom Brady uh, missed his weapons. I think this is going to be a playoff rematch. I think the, ba the Packers will see the Bucks again in the playoffs. And the Bucks will be at full strength. Mike Evans suspended for this one. So the, the Packers get him this time. I think the Bucks might be the better team. But we shall see later on in the road. How about the Vikings with their Kirk Cousins comeback? He was terrible all game. And at the end of the day, Dan Campbell cost this. Dan Cam the Lions have everything but a good head coach and a good quarterback. I think Detroit will have a big decision to make on Dan Campbell. He basically admitted after the game to, to, to go for the field goal instead of going for it on fourth down, said it was a poor decision, wish I had it back, I cost us the game. I agree, Dan. You're a bad head coach. You're a bad in-game decision maker, and that's why you let the Vikings steal this game from you. 28-24, captain checkdown Kirk Cousins stunk all game long. The Lions gifted another victory to the Minnesota Vikings. What a joke Dan Campbell is. Sorry. Panthers, I told you this might be one of the few games they can win. They get off the snide. They beat the Saints 22 to 14. Uh the big the big talk out of this game 
the Saints suddenly don't look now. By the way, the Eagles, if this <laughs> if the season ended today, the Eagles would have the sixth pick in the draft. I know a lot of you in the chat room are clamoring for Will Anderson, who's probably the best player in the draft. But if the Eagles are at six, they got the draft equity. Maybe they can move up. They got the sixth overall pick because the Saints stink, quite frankly. Jameis Winston, they're talking about a quarterback change already. Dennis Allen saying we're going to stick with Winston, but Andy Dalton, warm up that arm. Andy Dalton could be coming out of the bullpen for your New Orleans Saints, which is great for the Philadelphia Eagles. Play Andy Dalton, please. Hey, that sixth pick might be a top three pick. Suddenly you might get the best player in the draft next year. Oh, by the way, don't look now. I heard the Eagles are $35 million under the cap for next year. They should be able to get that Jalen Hurts deal done. Meanwhile, there's guys out here that don't want to pay Hurts the money. That's not me. I'm so tired, frankly, of being a broken record because I've been I've been talking about this since the preseason. Finally, the rest of the media is catching up to the football playbook. We've been teaching and preaching since August. Falcons beat the Seahawks 27-23 in the NFC. Who cares? Bears beat the Texans 23-20. Who cares? And then last night, the Broncos <laughs> looked like a Yankees-Red Sox game. 11-10. Broncos beat the 49ers at the end, despite Nathaniel Hackett's another bad coach. Another bad coach, in my opinion. But they overcome the bad coaching and the and the poor play by Russell Wilson, quite frankly, until the last drive. You know, they're trying to make... I remember towards the end of the Jim Moore uh, era in Atlanta, a good friend of the show, by the way, he, they, they tried to make Mike Vick a pocket passer. It didn't, it didn't exactly work out. Nathaniel Hackett's trying to make Russell Wilson a pocket passer. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop it right now. And you saw the last drive where Wilson was able to move around, pick up first downs with his feet and then beat you with the pass. The Broncos pulled this out. But Nathaniel Hackett is not the guy. I'm sorry. Kyle Shanahan's going to have to overcome some bad quarterback play because Jimmy G made bad decisions. He pulled the Dan Orlovsky, by the way, uh, running out of his own end zone on the safety, and then some bad throws down the stretch, especially the last interception to seal the deal. But how about this one? The report before the game. Jimmy G, who had a no-trade clause, we talked about all his uh, contract negotiations. Washington had a deal on the table that would have brought Jimmy G to Washington during the offseason. Jimmy G, with his no-trade clause, looking at that whole Daniel Snyder situation, who he, he could be gone sometime soon. Jimmy C said, Jimmy G said, thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. I don't want to go to Washington. And so Jimmy G shot down the trade that would have sent them to Washington. Instead, they give up a King's ransom for Carson Wentz, who will be out of here after the year. Ron Rivera shot down that report after the game, by the way. But Jimmy G could have been a Washington commander instead of Carson Wentz. So that's your week that was. I wanted to get that in because I know we got a star-studded lineup with our friend Martin Frank. Howard Balls are in hour two of the show. Hey, it's the football playbook with Rick Saratella brought to you by Ocean Casino Resorts, your home for Eagles pre and post game. On the other end of this break, I've got some key takeaways, some in-game reactions that I'm going to go through with you. So keep it locked. Hit the like button. We'll be back right after this. Mm -hmm. 